of the 19th century, the light industrial units of today are light and don't have anything to do with Satanism. If you'd like to wait for a moment, I'll just let Mr. Wilson know that you've arrived. Oh, yes, thank you. Mr. Mallard is here to see you, Mr. Wilson. Uh, yes, thank you, sir. I can see that. Mr. Wilson is seeing you now, Mr. Mallard. Uh, and this is a copy of your itinerary for the day. Oh, right, yes, thank you. Well, thank you, yes, that's um, very... I mean, well, it would be quite nice to be able to sort of just wander around and then see how things turn out. Yes, you're doing that from 11.30 until 11.50, look. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, shall we go through to my office? Yes, of course. What shall I say to Mr. Mallard? It was Mr. Mallard I was talking to. That's no problem. I'll make sure he knows. Thank you, Sue. That's fine. Hello. Hello. Yes, it's Roy Mallard. Yes, yes. Sue told me I was expecting you. Let's go through. Would you like uh, make some coffee? Oh, uh, that would be lovely, yes. Will white coffee be all right, Mr. Mallard? Yes, that would be fine, thanks. Will black coffee be all right? Uh, just white coffee with one sugar. No, no biscuits, then. Oh, well, uh, yes. uh, Zenitech manufactures peripheral things for the computer industry. With a total workforce of just over 84 people and an annual turnover every year, Zenitech is just like companies that are similar to it across the country as well as up and down it. In peripherals, you've got to get used to the fact that the technology is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. When you say peripherals, we make rate systems. Oh, I see. Yes, right. So, you're in a situation where you've got to run if you want to stand still. Yes, well, and presumably you don't want to stand still. Well, because if you stand still, then you go backwards. But I mean, presumably you want to go forward. Oh, yes, indeed, and we are doing, which is why we're managing to stand still. <coughs> yes. Ah, Sue. So, Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's lovely. Is there anything else I can get to, Mr. Mallard? Actually, a glass of water might be nice. There's some water in the coffee. Oh, good. I'll thank need you to put your own sugar in. Thank you. And it was no biscuits, wasn't it? Uh, we, uh, yes, sadly. Yes, it was. Paul is now in his early 50s, and although he's a firm believer that age isn't a factor in how old you are, there's a lived-in quality to his face which gives some indication of what the rest of him that you can't see is probably like. His route into management wasn't the conventional one. He'd already been working at Zenitech for six years as production manager when the then managing director, who was a fearless mountaineer and free-fall parachutist, died unexpectedly of natural causes. My background was in electronics rather than in management, so initially there was a very steep learning curve. Mm, that's interesting, steep learning curve. That's one of those phrases that I hear all the time but I never quite seem to understand. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. I've got a lot of phrases like that. What are the other ones? Because well, well, no, my I... sister went through all this with an eight-year-old and they had to get in an educational psychologist. Really, yes. Yeah, somebody well, had a very low IQ. Oh, dear, yeah. So, as, as, as managing director, how many people have you got under you? Everybody. I see, yes. But I mean, in terms of management structure, what, 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 what is uh, it? Well, okay. shall I draw it for you? Oh, well, that might be very now, let me just move this out of the way. Oh, okay. I'm sure that you don't want to look at it. All right. Yeah. And anyway, it would just be in the way. Right, yes. It's just a photograph. Anyway, I'll move it. Yes, right. She's pretty lovely girl, isn't she? Who, who, who? Alison. Alison. Yes. Oh. That's a wall she's leaning against. Yes, perhaps, yes. Have you got any other children? Alison's my wife. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I... We got married last time. I'm sorry, I've made a... No, I don't, don't, don't want it. It's a mess of the... Really? Show. Really? Don't want it. Anyway, management structure. Right. right. So, mm -hmm. look, this is me. Gosh, yes, that's very good. What yeah. do you mean? Well, it looks just... It's just a blob. Right, yes, I see, yes. Then there's the production manager yes. who looks after everything that happens in the actual production process. Yes. A sales director here yeah. with the sales team underneath her. Oh, she's a woman, is she? Isn't that obvious? Oh, yeah, I thought it was... Oh, yes, I see, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, yes. And then there's a company secretary who's a very important figure. Yeah, yes, he is. He's two-thirds yeah. accountant and two-thirds lawyer. Right, um, that's, that's four-thirds. Yes, he's a brilliant that way. Yeah. And finally, over here, we've got our quality assurance manager. What exactly is a quality assurance manager? Well, his job is to monitor what we do and how we do it and make sure that our performance comes up to scratch. Really? As it is, he's got a completely free role to suddenly appear at any time and do a spot check and anything that goes on here, from paperwork through to production. And that way we get our ISO 9000. ISO 9000. Now, what, what does that stand for? The International the Institute of uh, Standard of um, Official Work. Uh, on the, on the no, over the Well, actually, it's the 9000 part that's the important bit, really. And that stands for, you know, very good, well done. All over Europe. Right. So, right. so basically, you're responsible for making the big decisions, and then the management team work out ways of making that happen. Yeah, well, no, no, that's a very top-down model of management. Top, top down. Now, these days, the reality is much more bottom-up. Oh, yes. Yeah, would it help if I turn the piece of paper around? Uh, oh, I see. Yes. Oh, well, yes. That is, it really is. Um, it's completely bottom-up. Yes. 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 So, who is this 
Who is this person over here? Yeah. Yeah, this one's quite a small per person. Well, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's a little quick. Uh, mm. Oh, it's a wee fly. Oh, well, perhaps it's after the sugar. Uh, I'll just... Oh, oh God. Oh, sorry, has that got in your hand? That's okay, I'll just... Uh, right, I've got a handkerchief here. Oh, thanks very much, thanks, is it? Oh. Oh, dear, I'm sorry, yes. Oh. That could be a bit of baby food. Yes, I think it is, yes. Yeah, we've got a little one. Eleven months. Really? <laughs> Are you all right? I think it was cheese and lentil this morning. Or, um, of, of fish, perhaps. Ah, all right, tuna and egg. We yeah. tried them on cheese and lentil, but he just sicks it up straight away. Does he? Yes, really. It wasn't long before Sue arrived to tell me I was waiting to see Brian Peach, Xenotech's chief technical engineer. I describe Brian's a driven individual. Mm -hmm. He's a bit of a law unto himself and tremendously single-minded about everything he does, really. He's often here on his own late at night and then... Oh, hello, Ian. This is... Oh, uh, who was he? Uh, that was Ian Sharp. He's the quality assurance manager I told you about. Oh. He tends not to speak to anyone. Really? Why not? Uh, it's dangerous for him to form any kind of relationship with anyone. He's not likely to like that, is he? Anyway, here's Brian's office. I'll just make sure he knows you're coming. Yes? He knows you're coming now. Oh, right. Brian Peach is a stocky figure with grey hair receding at the temples and sort of wispy hair receding on the top of his head. Single and in his mid-forties, his intense grey eyes are behind stern spectacles. Well, it'd be surprising if they were anywhere else, I suppose. Anyway, his office is a mixture of the sculptured sleekness of computers and, and, and things and the cluttered sprawl of squash rackets, towels and very recently used shorts. And this is the PZ200. I mean, it's a lot better than the old... Have you been crying? Oh, it's nothing, no. I just something, you know, in, in my eye. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's a lot better than the old PZ100, which wasn't man enough for the job, really, despite what everyone said. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was all that hype about the PZ100 in the press. Yes. About increased power and flexibility, but I mean, what was it in the end? Well, well, well I don't know. Was, well, was basically it, it... old technology dressed up in some fancy packaging. Oh, that old trick, yes. So, one of the things that I wanted to ask... Well, I mean, this. This is a serious piece of kit. Yes, right. But, so, so, something I, I wanted to know... You can touch it, if you want. Uh, gosh, yes, well... Yes, that is serious, isn't it? Lovely tight string. Now, you get a cold call in winter, it's vital. Do you play a lot? I play once a day on average, usually more than that. Right. Interesting shaped head. Oh, I get that from my mother. <laughs> I mean, the racket, really. Oh, yes, the teardrop shape gives you a bigger sweet spot in the centre. Yes. Oh, how nice. So, I was going to ask you if you'd explain to me, in layman's terms, exactly what a RAID system is and what it does. In layman's terms? Yes. It's the bit with the um, slots in, where you stick the stuff in that box under the screen thing. Yes. Perhaps you could explain it in scientist terms, but, you know, a sort of normal scientist. Probably not the, not the scientists aren't normal, because some probably are. And anyway, what's so great about being normal, anyway? Because, I mean... Well, basically, a RAID system does pretty much what a conventional disk drive does. Really? Except it's replicated. Right. I mean, say you've got a two gigabyte disk. True, yeah. Uh, you might want to replicate it, say, four times. Yes, four. So that would give you a total of eight gigs. Eight. I mean, you only ever use two at any one time. One. But what you're basically doing is increasing your fault tolerance by a factor of whatever. Eight. Gosh. I mean, this is one here, that's all. I can hold it in one hand. Yes. It's much smaller than I thought it would be. Well, my mother had very small hands. Really? She had to have special golf clubs to make. Sure. Back in Paul Wilson's office at 11 o'clock, there's an important meeting in progress between Paul and his production manager, Tony Morgan. It was so important that it was still in progress when I arrived at 11.25, having had to sit out a compulsory cloakroom visit on Sue's itinerary. I mean, it's very tough on Tim, especially since it's nothing to do with his performance. I don't know how he's going to take it. No. Not where? The thing about Tim is he's actually very good at what he does. Yes, yes, and he's also a very nice bloke as well. Oh, dear. Sorry. Tim Trussler was taken on as Xenotech's delivery driver two years ago after the previous driver ran over some potentially important Japanese clients. But now, as part of a review of its operational plan, the company has decided to simplify its in-house transport structures by not having any and to contract its work out to a company which specialises in in uh, contracting in. Presumably you haven't said anything to him yet. No, no, I haven't, but I've had to be very careful. He's been talking about when we're going to replace a transit. Oh, really? So what did you say? So, well, it's probably easy. I just had to change the subject. What, to? Not replacing it. Yes, good. Mm. 
Well, oh, I did tell him that uh, you'd like to see him outside your office at three o'clock. Okay, thanks. Did you tell him that I'd like to see him inside? It? No, I didn't want to worry him too much. Mm, no. Get him used to the idea, you know. Yes, great. Hello? I'm sorry, I'm busy just at the moment. Uh, could... No, Sue. Sue, it's me. Sue, it's, it's not an answering machine. It's... Yeah, it's really me, sir. Hello. Oh, when you say runny eye. Oh, there's him. He's here. It's Sue for you. What? Oh, me. Hello? Yes? Yes. What I thought I might do is... Uh, uh, okay, then. Um, uh, yes, I'm... I'm, I'm sorry, I've got to go. Yeah, that's okay. Tony and I will just finish. Oh, he, he, he's, he's got to go too, I'm afraid. Oh. Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh. It had been agreed that as production manager, Tony would show me round the shop floor at exactly 11.50, although it hadn't been agreed by either of us. It's, um, it's okay. It's just a bit full of fun. Well, I seem to trap my ears. Now, that's the guy over your foot, not your head. Pardon? This guy over your shoes. Pardon? The production process of making raid systems is so sensitive that they could be damaged by contact with small particles of dust, minute amounts of static electricity, or large particles of dust. So to guard against this, it's vital for people entering the production area to put on special plastic clothing. Hats, overshoes, overall, over everything. Yeah. Feel as if about to go into an operating theatre. Oh my God, do you want to sit down? No, I mean, you know, dressed as a surgeon. Oh, I see, yes. Yes. So I suppose the idea of a shop floor is just completely inappropriate now. Uh, well, not completely. The idea of the floor is still quite important. But you're right, uh, what we're about to... You okay? Yes, it's just I can't seem to find a pair of this. We've got a pair of heads. Oh, I see. What we're about to enter now is what we call the... Oh, hi, Ian. Hi. Yeah. Yes, so uh, what we're about to go into is called a Class 100 clean room space. Really? Class 100? So, yeah. I mean, how, how far up does it go? Uh, all the way up to the ceiling. We don't like to take any chances. No, right. So, um, how do I look? The production area is a brightly lit space in which every aspect of the environment is carefully controlled, from the air, which is air-conditioned, to the temperature, which is also air-conditioned and set at a constant 20 degrees, irrespective of fluctuations in temperature inside the plastic overalls. Each of the teams around the room is responsible for producing complete finished units. Starting from nothing? Well, we're given the components, they're not miracle workers. No, so, so there's no conventional production line? No, the production line mentality isn't something that would be very helpful to us here today. Uh, uh, uh. It's much more about the conference if that's on the ground. Oh, sorry. It's hot. No, I mean, I didn't mean no we've got to be very strict about that. Yes, of course. It's just, you know, a bit, um, a bit warm in here. It's sort of a reflex. Um... Well, these suits are designed to breathe, so there shouldn't really be a problem. Yes, of course. Yes, I'm not quite sure how well this um, sweater breathes, though. So... Yeah, so today it's much more about encouraging people to see that they've got a stake in the collective enterprise and to make some oh. kind of personal investment in what they do. Yes, I see. They don't seem to get hot. Uh, would you like to go outside? and get some water. No, no, I'll be fine. Is your sweater synthetic fibre? Because they can be a bit clammy. Um, I'm not really sure, really. My wife bought it for me. What do you mean, your wife? What? When Tony was called away to deal with a problem with some gigabytes that didn't, um, weren't, weren't the right shape, I was keen to talk to the people at Zenatech who actually got their hands dirty. But of course there weren't any, so I had to talk to people who kept their hands really clean. I enjoy it here, really. It's clean, it's safe, and at the end of the day you actually make something. It's you don't get hot. It's very different from working in a slaughterhouse. You used to work in a slaughterhouse? No, but I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? I mean, you'll work it out for yourself. Yeah, yes, yes, I see what you mean. Just like one big family here, really. Really? Yeah. You see that man over there with the bald head? Yeah. I hate him. I'll tell you one thing, it's hell of a lot better than being a tree surgeon. Oh, well, yes, or working in a slaughterhouse. Blimey. I can never do that. How'd you cope with the smell? Um, the thing is, what I like is no two days are the same. I never know what's going to happen next. Really? I would have thought, I mean, how is tomorrow going to be different from today? The thing is, what I like is no two days are the same. I never know what's going to happen next. Oh, I see. Well, I'd like more money, but apart from that, I can't complain. What are relations like with the management team? Rubbish. It was them who told me I can't complain. You got another colour on you. Yes, it's just that my wife gave me Your wife? What? I must be one of the longest-serving people here. <laughs> I came here straight from school. Did you imagine staying here this long? No, I really have. Really. Have you been running or something? 
Oh, I love it here. Tell you the truth, yeah. I don't really work in this area, but I'm on my lunch hour, and they let me put on one of these suits and come and watch. Oh, it's brilliant. So what is it that you actually do? I'm the delivery driver. Oh, my God. I know. It's great, isn't it? Um, you... They well, let me take the transit home and everything mm, sometimes. Do they? I mean, it's getting on a bit now. But we're going to get a new Mercedes turbo diesel at any moment. No, I mean... Yes. Oh. Self-leveling suspension and everything. I love driving and, and I love all this high-tech stuff, yeah. so I've really fallen on my feet. Oh, how? I just how? put down a deposit on this flat with my girlfriend. Oh, my God. I know. It's great, isn't it? Are you married? Me? Yes, I am. Blimey. That's fantastic. Xenotech doesn't have canteen facilities of its own. Most people bring in their food, sandwiches for lunch, and perhaps something like, for instance, biscuits to cheer them up when they feel a bit sort of low on energy during the day. For the management, lunch is something eaten in their offices when it can be fitted in. Not that they have tiny offices or very unwieldy lunches, but, I mean, they're often very busy. Today, though, Paul has suggested going to a pub-cum-restaurant a few miles outside Northampton. So, actually, I was disappointed, but not at all surprised, when Sue told me this wasn't yeah. going to happen. I'm sorry, Mr. Mallard. No, no, it's fine. You don't look very surprised. No, well, well you know, I'm... Mr. Wilson, I'm, uh, can I get you a towel? No, thanks. There's a bit of, bit of a breeze in here, so, you know, it should be... Mr. Wilson's left a message for you. Oh, right, OK. So, uh, so where is it? I'm giving it to you now. Ah, oh, right. Good. Mr. Wilson's been called away on urgent business. Does that mean there's some kind of crisis? His wife, Mrs. Wilson, phoned. His son has eaten a packet of 13 amp fuses and they've had to go to hospital. Oh, dear. Is he, is he going to be all right? He's fine, yes, but his wife passed out and hit her head on the washer-dryer. Oh, dear. Is she all right? Not sure. They want Mr. Wilson to go and tell them what her normal behaviour is like. Oh. He should be back by two o'clock. He sends his apologies, and here they are. Well, look, I'll just go off. So I've um... arranged an alternative meeting for you, such that it's in lieu. Oh, great. Hello, Ian. Oh, hello. <laughs> right. Fine. I mean, in the end, it's just a car, isn't it? Yes, it is, yes. It gets you from A to B. Sorry, I suppose the spec's not bad for this price bracket. No. These are electric, for instance, look. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, they are, aren't they? When Lisa Bell was appointed as sales director last year at the age of 33, she was the youngest of the management team ever to have been taken on as a woman. After graduating with a degree in theology from Lancaster University, she spent several years working on an oil rig, initially off Norway, and then, after heavy storms, off Denmark. She was just about to set off on a round trip of about an hour in her car, and Sue had arranged that we should talk whilst Lisa drove. Lisa had already had her lunch, so that was all right. That was great fun. I was doing what I was interested in. Had time to travel. That was in my twenties. But this goes up and down automatically. What? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. That's uh, that. So, what made you decide to change direction? I don't know really. Working on rigs is fine when you're young and single, but you can't do it forever. So, so you're married now. Oh, God, no. I've got far better things to do with my time than that. <laughs> I can't be doing with all that. I'm having far too much fun. H how much of your time do You're you... You're not married, are you? Uh, yes, I am, actually. Y yes. Why are you looking at me like that? You're on the pavement a bit. Oh, yeah. sorry. It's OK. I didn't hit him, did I? I don't think so, no. Not not, not really, no. So, um, how, mu how much of your time do you spend on the road? I must just elapse in concentration, that's all. No, I mean on the road in, in your job, generally. Oh, right, right. Yes. Well, I'm out and about most days. We've got three representatives more or less constantly in the field. In the field? Well, they're really bad drivers then. <laughs> I mean, instead of on the... I mean, it was just a joke. So, so, so your role is more of a less... I'm a, bit, I'm a bit sort of... Well, it's like everything. If you're good enough at something, you eventually get promoted and end up not doing it anymore. Mm. I mean, how long have you been a radio journalist? Fifteen years. Well, anyway, I spend most of my time these days you know, organising sales meetings, training people, hiring and firing, all back in the office writing reports. Look, press that. What? Well, what? Go on, go on, press Down it. here? Yeah. Um, oh. Oh. Neat, isn't it? Oh, yes, that's, that is sort of an interesting sensation. Obviously, it, it does tilt forwards as well. Does it? Yes. So, you've come into a new career and made it into a senior position quite quickly. Do you, oh. Do you think it's still harder for a woman to be successful in the business environment, or are things changing now? Well, I think a lot... Actually, of... is there a way of stopping this? I think it's a rocker switch. Oh, is it? Oh, never mind then. No, just push the other end. Oh, ah, oh, yes. Yes. And I think it all depends on the type of woman you are. I think men are dead easy to see through. They like little children. Yes. It's just pathetic, really. It is, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And, and look, I know, I know it isn't politically correct to say this, but I mean, if men 
are going to be more easily persuaded to do business with a woman because they think she's attractive. Then I don't have a problem with that. No, that's interesting, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, w w what about in your case, then? How, how do you say this tilted back upright? Oh. The sunroof. Right. Where, where are we? I was surprised to find that we were back in the car park at Zenatech, and when I asked Lisa why she'd driven for an hour and ended up back where we'd begun, she explained that that's how round trips worked. Mr. Wilson has returned, Mr. Mallard. Right. He'll I'll... see you as soon as you're with him. Good. Oh, hang on a minute. Just come in. Good morning, Mr. Wilson. I found Paul in his office after what would have been lunch if there'd been food of some kind involved at any point. <coughs> he was standing next to some shelves with a large and really very absorbing book in one hand and part of a plain chocolate bourbon biscuit in the other. Damn, I've dropped my keys. Oh. Hello. Hello. How long have you been there? Oh, not too long. So I was in a little world of my own. Well, they're, they're lovely, aren't they? The book. I mean, the book. Oh, I see. Paul was preparing for something that all managers have to do from time to time, but which few of them look forward to. The point is that as a manager, having to tell people bad news comes with the territory. Right, yes. So it's a bit like being a doctor then. Well, except the doctors can be wrong. I'm certain that when I tell someone he's sacked, he is. I suppose in a way. I mean, it would be like a doctor saying to you, I'm sorry, I've got some bad news for you. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yes. yes. I suppose in a way it's worse for you than for the person who's going to be sacked. No, it's much worse for them. Yes, yeah, That's why it's so difficult for me. Yes, I suppose. And that's the whole that's point. A... Right, yes. And, and is there any form... You don't talk to me about doctors. I've had enough of them for one day. Right, yes. So is there... Trying to impress a frightened young mother by ex her head. Really? Is she, is she all right? She's a bit dazed, that's all. Mm. Got it into her head somehow when I arrived that her father had come to see her. Oh, and about your son? Oh, he's fine. Yeah. He was sick in the ambulance on the way there, and it turned out it wasn't as serious as it might have been. There were only six amphuses. Oh, good. Come in. Oh, and it was tuna, by the way. Yes, I thought it was. I have Mr. Flowers on the outside of the door, Mr. Wilson. Would you like to come through? Thank you, Sue. I'll be out in a moment. Oh, well, shall I brush it in straight away, then? No, that's fine. Thank you, Sue. Right, well, I hope this isn't too upsetting. No, thanks very much. I'm sure I'll be all right. I was just checking how we stand on this in terms of employment law when you come in. Yes, I was going to ask you about the book. This? Yeah. Uh, this is Kroner's. It's uh, really a reference book for employers. Oh, I see. What's it called? Kroner's Reference Book for Employers. Right. So it's a useful thing to have on your shelf. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. You ask any manager who's got shelves. Uh, come in, Tim. Have a seat. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh, wow. A cheese plant. I think you've met Mr. Mallard. Oh, yes. hi, yeah. How are you? Uh, I'm fine, thanks. It's great, isn't it? Yes, yes, it's lovely. Being cruel in order to be kind is never easy. And since Paul wasn't doing this to be kind, his task now of simply being cruel was even more challenging. Underneath the civilized veneer, this was a kind of ritual being played out in which both men had their role to play, although it was clear that, of the two, it was Tim that was finding his role, which was to be made redundant, more difficult to grasp. House plants are great, aren't they? We just went out and bought a whole load on Sunday. Tim, mm. the thing is, we haven't got much furniture yet, so it really cheers the place up. Houses are great, aren't they? I wanted to say to you personally, Tim, that the position we're currently in is a very difficult one for us. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that, Mr. Wilson. And you think I can help in some way? Well, but uh, this wouldn't happen in other companies, you know. Wouldn't it? But, Tim, what I'm wanting you to understand is that we have nothing but praise for your commitment to the company and the way you've done your job. I mean, Linda, she does hair and that. Her boss at the salon, he just walks up to her last week and tells her she's sat. Bosh, just like that. Oh, how... Oh. But Tim, what am I... She's not sorry. qualified or nothing, so it's not going to be easy. You know, no one wants hair these days. Tim, I've got some... So I don't mind working longer hours, Mr. Wilson. You don't need to worry or nothing. That's quite lucky, really. And I mean, we can fit more in the new Mercedes. Tim, uh, you haven't quite grasped what I'm telling you. <laughs> Linda's always said I'm slow to catch on. Mm -hmm. I don't know what she means. Now, I want you to bear in mind all I've said to you, but I'm afraid that I'm going to have to let you go. Oh, right. Thank you very much. 
It's not even five o'clock yet. I have got a few things to do around the van light, you know. What I thought I'd do is clean the wheels. Hey, no, 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 look, really... No, but I reckon when you're selling second hands, clean wheels is worth having. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, Sue, I know who you are. Yes, and where are you speaking from? Oh, the hospital? Yeah. Of course. Put them through. Hello? Yes, yeah, speaking. You can get special polish for the tires, you know. Can you? Uh -huh. It's like shoes is the first thing you look at in a person if you want to find out what they're really... Oh, what, what? What? Oh, oh my God, I... I'd better come, I? No, 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 I'd better, really. Yes, thank you, thank you. I'm afraid I've got to go. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Wilson. I think we're just about finished anyway. No, Tim, we haven't, actually. We'll need to talk some more. Oh, good. Yes, let's. But I'll have to leave you with this. We're going to have to let you go. For good. I see. Right. Right. What does that mean, then? I'm sorry, I really have got to go. We'll continue this. Uh, sorry. No, it's okay. I hope it's not serious. Uh, they think she started to get blood vision. Oh, dear. What do they think? They're doing some more tests. It might just be blood speech. Oh, I see. Hey, if I don't see you later, I'm sure Sue will look after you. Oh, good. Oh, yes. Thank you. Ah, uh, Sue. Yes, Tim? Oh, Sue. Well, um, well, I'd better, uh... I don't understand. Uh, pardon? Well, I don't know if it's me being sick. Well, I, it, 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 I mean, I think I'll just, um, Can you explain it to me? Explain the... Wh what he was saying. Well, um, he was... You... A bit, um, what? You, you. What's the matter? Uh, what? What is it? Um, well, I think he was. It's just that. I mean, I mean, I mean, they really think you're good. Oh, what a relief! Yeah. You know, I had this really funny feeling they about really that. They really think it's... you're good. So, but it. Um, they are just going to have to to make you to let you be um, sort of. A bit redundant, really. Redundant? I'm... I'm very sorry. <laughs> you bastard! It's no surprise to find that in the end, Paul Wilson's job is about people. Except it might come as a bit of a surprise for Tim. In the 70s, managers were often demonized as... Uh, as demons. And in the 80s, they were lionized as... Uh, as often as possible. But in the economic and cultural climate of the 90s, managers like Paul know for sure that the only certainty is uncertainty. The challenge now is the management of change. And the key is to see challenges as opportunities, especially when they aren't. But it's, look, this is probably harder for me than it is for you. No, it's not really, is it? it it's, um, yeah, yeah, have this. Thank you, you bastard. I mean, it's just the... Oh, what's this? Oh, yes, sorry. Is it tuna? Uh, and egg, yes. Roy Mallard would like to give a special thank you to Chris Langer and also to Bill Patterson, Bellany Hudson, Roger Sloman, Kim Wall, Benedict Sanderford and Alice Arnold. The programme was written by John Morton and produced by Paul Schlesinger.